The Burana are a major semi-nomadic pastoralist tribe who are one of over 200 clans belonging to the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia called the Oromo. The Oromo are split up into two major branches, the Burana, Oromo, and the Barentu, which both make up several clan families. Classified as Eastern Kushites, they are believed to have originally inhabited the Horn of Africa up until the 10th century, at which time they were reportedly forced by the Somali to migrate west. They continued migrating across the region in search of pasture and water before eventually settling in Ethiopia and Kenya during the 1500s. Three leaders in the community named More Ochuma, Abaj Babo and Wale Wachu led the tribe across the Dawa River, a perennial waterway in southeastern Ethiopia. They each led separate groups at different times, causing the clan to split up into thirds. One group was led south, another one veered towards Somalia, and the last group ended up in Ethiopia and Kenya. Borana is pronounced Boran, with the final vowel being silent and refers to the people of their language and also means friend or kind person. The Burana speak Afan Oromo, a dialect of Oromo and an Afro-Asiatic Cushitic language widely spoken by tribe members in Ethiopia and Kenya. Locally, the language is commonly known as Afan Burana, which translates to the Burana language. The Burana worshipped a god named Wak, who they offered animal sacrifices to and performed rituals that involved fried coffee. According to their beliefs, Wak was the source of all good things in life, especially the rain. When the Burana prayed, they would touch the ground and worship the sky because it produced rain, which then entered the ground and produced life. The Burana include 17 clans, divided into two subgroups called the Gona and the Sabo. As a community, they recognized four kinds of leaders. Those born of God, called the Kelu. Those who assumed power according to their clan lineage, called the Abagada. Those who were elected and ran the community for eight years, called the Bagada and those who served under elected officials as judges known as the AU or HAYU. The Gada system, a traditional Burana social stratification system, was partially based on an eight-year cycle of age sets, also known as Gada, which helped to structure the economic, political, and social life of the tribe. Anyone born in the same Gada were considered members of the same age set. The Gada system is believed to have facilitated their migration to the southern lowland thanks to its militaristic and expansionistic features. Only males could participate in the system, but not every man in the community was allowed to take part. Members of the system were part of an exclusive group called Iman Korma, or Children of the Bull, and new members could only be inducted if their fathers were already part of the system. The bravest man in Burana history was named Dido Gawole, and he was best known for killing the bravest man from the Jam Jamtu clan. Dido's story was as unique as it was heartbreaking. His mother, who had been barren for years, decided to sleep with eight men in order to get pregnant. Her strategy to get a child eventually worked and Dido was born. He would grew up to be a mighty warrior, but his wife ended up being his downfall. She betrayed him after falling in love with one of the captives that Dido brought home from war. She conspired with his enemies and set up a trap that allowed them to kill Dido. The main source of income for the Burana was the sale of cattle, which enabled them to buy clothes and tobacco. They also mined magadi, which was used in cooking, and grew coffee for bartering purposes. The Burana considered themselves a peaceful and generous people who were willing to share their resources with their neighbors, provided that they espoused the same values. Any rivers, roads, or land that fell under their jurisdiction was communal property for neighboring communities. Before a child was born, tobacco was brought and put in the house to be smoked by people who came to visit the mother. When a baby was born, the father would adorn himself in regalia by wearing a kalacha, which is a phallus-like ornament, on his forehead and carrying the uroro, otherwise known as a stick, and a licha, which was a whip, used to discipline his wives and slaves. Animal skin would also be tied around the door of the room where the mother gave birth. However, no rituals or ceremonies were performed when a girl was born. If a man's first wife was barren, he was allowed to marry a second wife on one condition. If the second wife had children, the first wife was allowed to adopt some of the children and raise them as her own. A man was allowed to marry as many wives as he desired as long as he could afford to provide for them. 
When a father died, the eldest son in the family inherited nearly all his cattle. The daughters only got one cow each, along with furniture and items from inside the home. His eldest brother inherited his wife. If the deceased had multiple wives, then the brother would inherit the first wife with the other wives going to his other brothers. Clothing for women was made from animal skin, mainly the goat, and were often dyed to make them vibrant and colorful. Women also wore rings and necklaces. Men wore white from head to toe, which included a white turban and a big calico sheet that was wrapped around the body with shorts worn underneath. Leaders in the community wore turbans featuring black spots and reddish colors. Their turbans were called rufas and was specifically designed to look more like crowns. And so she subjected the men into all the house chores that you know men, uh, women used to do. Women, uh, men were told to sweep the house. They don't want car and babies in their the heart of women. So they found that was, they were not happy with all these things. And then one time they started meeting, in the meetings, uh, she could not allow anybody arguing with her. But she is uh, just a lot of. Uh, so one time she said, all right, she talked of impossibilities. She said, bring shoes that are hairs from both sides. You know, they make their, their hairs from, their shoes from the animal skin. Then she, she says, bring the shoes that are hairs, hairs from both sides. This is impossible. Then they said, animals should not be released for the uh, for for, gra for grazing mm. and they should not remain at home. Mm. This is also impossible. Mm. And then they were told, all right, bring a, a bag full of fleas. Fleas. Mm. You know what fleas are? Mm. And then this is also very important. Mm. They started meeting and said, trying to, you know, uh, trying to look for an answer to this jigsaw and they could not find it. Mm. That was one poor young boy oh. who gave advice, oh. just maybe through the, through the intervention of God, I don't know, the little boy came a good brave and said, all right, guys, uh, what were you told in the meeting? And people could just despise the little boy for about three, four times. And then the third time, one old man said, hey, could you just please uh, hear this little man, what is he trying to say? And the guy says, all right, the shoes that has, um, the shoes that has uh, hairs from both sides are the, uh, the, the ears of the, of the donkey. Very interesting. Ah! Then the Burana said, all right, they started cutting the donkey's uh, ears. You know, they are long, almost oh. like, uh, like a shoe. And that's hairs from both sides. And then they said, um, a bag full of fleas, the, the little boy advised and said, all right, Collect all the dug of the of the of the donkeys and put them in a bag, tie them above the, the fire for seven days. You will see everything will turn into fleas. And it happened so. Very interesting. I don't know how science what science is <laughs> it was. Yeah, sure. So then he says, all right, what you do? Uh, then you started arguing with the with the, with the old woman oh. in the meeting. First of all, dig the big hole. You know, they are, they are ready now to kill her. There's a, a skin, oh. finish her. Dig a big hole, spread the, 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 the hide on top of that hole, and then uh, put her chair close to the, to the hole. I started arguing with her, and uh, she, will be, she, she, she will start rolling her seats, and then she will uh, drown. Women were not involved in any decisions made by Burana leaders. Traditionally, their roles included giving birth, raising children, fetching water and grass, and building homes. According to legend, a warrior woman named Ako Aban Aye was once elected into a position of power by the clan, but she became corrupt and too authoritative and was even said to have mistreated the other men. 
It said that she forced all the men to do their house chores, including sweeping the house and carrying babies on their backs. To get rid of her, the men in the clan designed a trap. They dug a deep hole in a place called Liban, covered it with animal hide, and put a seat on top. They invited her to sit down and she fell to her death, marking the last time a woman ever held any position of power within the tribe. Women had minimal influence in the community except for the Khalidi, wife to the Kailu, who was elected from a specific clan as a virgin and was not supposed to bleed, even for circumcision or to get her ears pierced. Women were also tasked with building houses for their husbands and children. The houses, which were more like small huts, were built using sticks and grass and were often temporary homes for the nomadic Barana who were simply looking for protection from the elements and other animals. Boys from the same age set were circumcised at the same time, while girls were circumcised individually. In preparation for the ceremony, an animal was slaughtered for boys, but girls were only given food prior to their procedure. After a boy was circumcised, he would give the skin to his mother, who would then give him a cow. The father would also give the son a cow, but girls received nothing. Instead, following her procedure, a girl would stay at home and wait for a man to approach her family with a dowry for her hand in marriage. The Burana diet was comprised of milk, meat, soup, blood, vegetables, and wild fruits called deca, orodmi, and arores. Since they lived in wet areas with higher elevation, maize, millet, and wheat were staples of the Burana diet. Slaughtering cows and goats was only done during droughts because the meat from one bull could last months. The Burana made sure not to waste any of the cow, even cooking and eating the bones, while roasting and drying the meat so it could be preserved for months. The blood used to drink was collected in a gourd from the jugular vein in the neck of a living bull or cow after it was pierced with an arrow. During traditional times, even the water from the intestines of slaughtered animals was served as a drink. Marriages between a man and a woman from the same subgroup were strictly prohibited. It was also taboo not to circumcise girls, which is a practice that the Burana adopted from their ancestors. Girls who weren't circumcised were looked down upon, and men wouldn't even consider them for wives. When someone had committed a crime or dishonored the clan, they would be brought before the IU, who would make a judgment on whether they were guilty or innocent after hearing their case. The punishment was doled out by the Council of Elders and would range in severity depending on the crime committed. Blacksmiths in the Burana clan were very resourceful and valuable. They made pangas, hoes, and arrows in addition to milk containers made out of animal skin. Medicine men and women were also valuable in the clan, curing various diseases such as rabies and helping barren women get pregnant using roots and herbs. Most rituals were done following the death of a community member. After someone died, a cow was usually slaughtered and people would gather at night to pay their respects. The deceased person would be stripped of all their clothing and a white cloth would be tied around their body before being lowered into a deep grave. If a mother died, then all their children would shave their hair, but if a father died, then the wife would be shaved as well. A wife also wouldn't bathe for some times up to a year following the death of her husband. Traditionally, when a leader died, his body was not buried. Instead, the community surrounded the body and sang songs throughout the night in his honor. When morning arrived, the body would be gone and no one would know how or where it disappeared to. One man from the Galantukuku clan claims to be a snake charmer of sorts, curing snake bites and even ridding homes of dangerous snakes using his bare hands. He says that he spits his saliva on the snake, then simply picks it up using his hands. For someone who's already been bit, he says that he spits on the inflicted area and his saliva produces the cure. The Burana had scientists who studied the stars and developed their own calendar that was based on lunar rather than a solar cycle. They used a permutation calendar which consisted of a 29 and a half day month and a 354 day year. The calendar doesn't include weeks, rather each day of the month has its own name. Since there are only 27 days in a month, the first two or three days are used twice at the beginning and end of each month. Homes were built from right to left of the village and clan members were housed according to the seniority. For example, only the youngest people in the clan were housed in houses located on the left side of the village. 
Today, the majority of the tribes and nearly 4 million Chusitic speaking people live in Ethiopia, in Liban, and Dyer, with a small percentage spread across Marsabit County into Tana River and Garissa County in Kenya's northern region. A small refugee population also live in Somalia. Yeah. <laughs>